How are children? Once again, you are welcome for this lesson. My name is Nabor Richard. Uh, get seated, get all the material you're supposed to be using, and kick off right away with our lesson. We are still continuing with our sexual system. As for those who are joining us, so far you have covered about four good lessons. So I welcome you once again, settle down, get your pencil, get your notebook, and note down a few things. So we are going to be looking at yet another thing. This is going to be blood. We are going to see all about it. But if I look at that lesson of blood, I left you some to work last time. Remember that work I left you with? Get your pencil and check the answers. All right. I left you some few numbers last time. We can as well check, check through the answers and see whether they are rhyming up with my, ans my answers I put here. I don't have to go through the questions. You can as well go through them and see. Uh, did you pass them? There were only five questions, and they are simple questions. All right. Hope you are done with the marking. And let me hope you have you passed all the numbers. If you had any of those numbers, remember try the collection for that one. So today, as I've already mentioned, that we are going to look at something interesting, something about blood. So by the end of this lesson, you definitely know what blood is. Two. You definitely know what makes up our blood. Those are the components of blood. And then three, we'll be able to tell me the function of those components. And last but not least, we shall look at the five, at least the functions of blood. We are going to look at all of them. So our first session, we look at definition of blood. So what is blood? And two, what's the color of blood? Have you ever got anything like a wound on yourself? What came out of that wound? What was it looking like? So you want to find out what is blood? And what does blood look like? Let's find out the meaning of blood. Uh-huh. We're reading through together. So we are saying that blood is the red liquid tissue saturating in the body. That means that blood is red in color. And say tissue. Why? Do you know why we're calling it a tissue? Remember at the beginning I told you our bodies have got what we call tissues. Tissues are a collection of cells. So blood is going to be a red liquid tissue. There are such reds all over our body. Any part of your body you may cut off, you are going to see that red thing coming out. And be careful. Don't hurt yourself because you want to see blood now. So what does this blood comprise? So soon too. So what does our blood contain? What, these are what we call the components of blood. Can you think of any component of blood, anything which is found in your blood? I know some of you could be thinking about some other thing. I saw what, I saw what. Fine, let's find out with my answers. Uh -huh. So we're saying that our blood is made up of two major things here. It's made up of the liquid and the solid parts. Now, the solid part of blood comprises of three main components. And these are, one, we have what we call the red blood cells. Two, we have what we call the platelets. Say so those words clearly. And three, we have what we call the white blood cell. Then the liquid part of blood comprised of something we call plasma. You can see that word, plasma. So basically, the components of blood are four. We can go through them. Red blood cells, platelets, white blood cells, and plasma. Maybe let me pose a question there. Can you tell me the difference between the red blood cells and plasma? Can you think of that? Fine, now you're able, you're able to tell me the answer. Yeah, you're going to find that all these components you see here, they are in solid form. While plasma is the only liquid form of blood. So we want to find out what does each of those components look like. Let's start with one of them here. So we shall start by looking at the red blood cells. I know you are thinking about red blood cells. What do they look like? Are they very red? Are they, what do they look like exactly? Now, these red blood cells have got certain characteristics. As you can see all of them here, one, they are very thin, they are round, they are like a disc. I know you have discs you are used in your home, in your radios. So they are like, actually they are like a donut. Have you eaten a donut? Yeah. They have got that round part there. Two, they don't have a nucleus. A nucleus is the central part which does most of the cell activities. Three, 
they have a red pigment. That pigment, we call it hemoglobin. Can you say the word again? Hemoglobin. Uh, this hemoglobin is responsible for the color of the blood we are seeing, which is red. At the same time, it aren't responsible for the color of the red blood cells. Now you have known why we are calling them red blood cells. Because of this substance we call hemoglobin. Now, this hemoglobin, I've already told that it's responsible for the color of blood. The main function of these red blood cells is to carry oxygen in the body. They are able to carry this oxygen by the use of this substance. I've already mentioned here the hemoglobin, that red pigment. This pigment is going to combine with oxygen and form a substance we shall be calling oxhemoglobin. Say the word clearly. Oxhemoglobin. Now, this oxhemoglobin is going to be transported to the cells which are lacking oxygen. So they drop the oxygen there and they will pick the carbon dioxide and take it where it's supposed to be taken. Now, these red blood cells, they are manufactured in the red bone marrow of short bones. I know you have not done about the bones, but our bodies have got different types of bones. Some bones are long, some bones are short. So among the short bones, we have got the ribs. If you touch yourself, you feel there are bones there. Those are the ribs. That's where they are going to be manufactured. They are also going to be manufactured in another bone we call the sternum, which is between your ribs. You touch that, there's a bone there. They are manufactured there. And by the way, they are very many. They are the, the majority in the, in the body. I've got very many of them in terms of millions and millions of these red blood cells. These red blood cells, more still, they need an amino salt, we shall be calling iron, to be formed. And if you don't have this iron, we shall see later on, if you don't eat food which are rich in iron, what's going to happen later on? You are going to be suffering from a deficiency we don't have, we call anemia. So let us look at what our red blood cells look like exactly. Fine, look at them. You can see the color, they're red, they're like a disc, and they don't have a central, they don't have a nucleus. So this is what our red blood cells look like. Let's look at the white blood cells. Fine, I know you're thinking about, are they white in the color? Now, if the red blood cells are red, what about red, white blood cells? Are they going to look like white? No. Let's look at their characteristic. One, for them, they don't have a definite shape. They are irregular. Two, they have a nucleus. Now, that nucleus part of it, it controls most of the cell activities of these cells here. Their main function is to defend the body against germs. I know all of us have ever gotten a disease of one type or another. So we have to find out how they fight, how they defend our body against a germ. So these white blood cells, they fight the germs in the body by engulfing and producing antibodies. They will attack, they will locate a germ and they will go around it and engulf it and digest it. And besides that, they will also produce antibodies which will fight that germ and kill it. More still, they also produce another substance we call antitoxin. Antitoxin is a, sub is a substance that can destroy the poison in the cell. So these white blood cells, for them, they are manufactured in the bone marrow of long bones. It's manufactured in the spleen. It's manufactured in the lymph nodes. I know some of these words are quite big for some of you, but don't worry, you'll be learning about them when you go to other classes later on. So let's have a look at the white blood cell. What it looks like? Fine, look at it. Uh huh. So this is the nucleus part I've been talking about, which controls the cell activities. This part here, you see, which is not colored, is what we call the cytoplasm. Cytoplasm, you shall be looking at it later on. Now, below here, we are seeing how our white blood cells defend our body against the germs. I've already told the white blood cell fight this causing germ in three ways. One, it engulfs the germ. Two, it produces antibodies. And three, it produces antitoxin. So this diagram you see here is showing us if at all you have been attacked by a germ. So what would the white blood cell exactly do? On identifying the germ, this is now the germ they are going to be sent to that point where the germ is. A germ of any disease. Let's say malaria. Let's say flu. Let's say even COVID, by the way. It's going to be attacked by this white blood cell. These are our soldiers who are defending us. So they will locate that germ, and they will go around it, as you can see in the second diagram. And by so doing, they are trying to engulf the germ. So in the last diagram you're seeing here, the germ has been engulfed and they are going to fight 
inside there. So they fight, the white blood cell tries to fight and fight and fight and fight. Eventually, somebody is going to win. Either the white blood cells are going to win or the germ is going to win the white blood cell. So sometimes you are more likely to see something like pus. If you happen to detect pus coming out of any part of the body, those are the remains of the, 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 the fight which, which, the, which was there between the white blood cell and the germ. For those, these are the white blood cells. So we can as well look at the, now the platelets. So what do these platelets look like? Now, this one for them, they are tiny fragments, tiny cells, which are found in blood. For them, their work is to help in clotting action of the blood when there's bleeding. In the case you bleed, sometimes you are going to realize that there's something which come and cover up that, that wound or that cut. That's going to be a platelet doing that for us. So when blood clots at the place of an injury, it closes the wound and the bleeding stops. It depends. If the wound sometimes when the wound is quite big, some blood can still continue oozing. If the wound is slightly smaller, blood is more going to stop coming out. So these blood cells for them, they are made in the red bone marrow, just like the red blood cells. They also manufacture red bone marrow, and they don't have a nucleus, just like the red blood cells. Now, how do we form these clots? One, we are saying when the skin is cut and blood starts oozing out, to ooze means to come out. The platelets come and form a network of fibers to prevent the loss of blood. And the food rich in vitamin K and actually calcium, they help the past formation of these platelets here. So when you get a wound, still blood is going to come in and help the past and protect us from this germ from entering, by forming a clot over that wound. And what's going to do that are what we call the platelets. So the platelets basically, they help in the clotting of blood. Hope you are following children. Let's go and look at the last component. So these are our platelets here. They are tiny fragments, very tiny by the way. They may look like that. We'll look at the last component of blood we call plasma. Now plasma, I've already mentioned that this is the liquid part of blood. As you can see our diagram here, 45% is taken up by the red blood cells. 1% is going to be taken up by the white blood cells and platelets. Now, the biggest part, as you can see, is taken up by the, that liquid part, which is plasma. Now, this plasma has got several things in it. It has got food, digested food, it has got water, it has got hormones, it has got antibodies, and so on. So what does plasma do for us in our body? These are the functional plasma here. Plasma transport digested food from the Ilium to the tissues where they are supposed to be taken. Plasma transports carbon dioxide. Plasma transports hormone. Plasma transports antibodies. It also distributes heat around our body. So this is the fun these are the functions of plasma. So from these children, I'm very sure by now we must be able to derive all the functions of blood. So do you know any function of blood? Let's have a look at some of the functions of blood here. Fine. We can as well go through them. The first function tells us that blood transports oxygen from the lung. Remember that I told you that blood must go, must be picked from the lung and taken to the tissues. So blood is going to transport oxygen from the lung to all body tissues. Two, blood is going to transport carbon dioxide from the body tissues to the lungs. Remember that blood vessel carries the blood to the lungs? Who can remember that one? Aha, uh -huh, you can see it's called the pulmonary. Artery. So it's going to be carrying the blood transport carbon dioxide from the body tissues to the lungs. Three, blood transport digested food from the ileum to all body tissues. Blood also transport waste products such as urea from the liver to the kidney, where they are going to be removed as waste products. Blood also distributes hormones from the glands where they are produced to the body parts that, that, that needs them. Blood also has got the platelets which help in clotting. And the floating agent helps us to prevent germ from entering. Blood also protects our body from disease infection through the white blood cell. And finally, blood also distributes what? Heat. So let me hope children, you have been following up all this. And let me hope you have been very good children. Um, I'm going to leave, leave, leave you some little work, some little work about what you have been learning. You can see the questions. Uh, first question is clear, what's blood? The second question, to mention at least from any three components of blood. And the third question, to name from the liquid part of blood. And finally, 
what's the function of each of these components of blood? The white blood cell, the red blood cells, and the platelets. Thank you for being good children. Take care of yourself and stay safe.